This is the FEMA Substantial Damage Estimator Training Series. Welcome to Module 4, How to Use the Substantial Damage Estimator Tool. This module covers how to create residential and non-residential assessments using the Substantial Damage Estimator Tool. First, we'll cover how to add a residential assessment using the SDE Tool. Either click the Add New Residential Assessment icon on the home page, or Navigate to the toolbar, click File, then Add New Residential Assessment. Both options bring up the same screen. If property records have been imported, you will see a list of all residential property records in the SDE database. You should select the property record that matches the structure you are assessing and click Use Selected Property. If you want to create a new property record for the assessment, then you should click New Property. This screen also offers you the option to preload the assessment with default values if you have entered default values in SDE. If a new property record was selected for the assessment, the Address tab will not contain any data and you must fill out as much information as possible. If an imported property record was selected, then some of the fields will be populated. You have two options to save an assessment. Either the Save button in the top right corner can be clicked, or you can navigate to the top left toolbar, click File, and then Save. Once the assessment is saved, a window containing errors and warnings will pop up. It is required that you address any red or yellow errors. You can go back into the assessment by clicking Address Errors Warnings and populate or correct the data fields that are marked by red and yellow push pins. Red errors must be addressed in order to save the assessment, and yellow errors are required to save a valid assessment. Within the Address tab, only certain fields are required for a valid assessment. The first five data fields in the top left corner are not required, although a community may want the information populated if it is available. The NFIP Community ID and Community Name are required. If you do not know this information while performing the assessment in the field, it's recommended that a dummy value or placeholder be used to flag the field. You should record latitude and longitude to a minimum of five decimal places in the field. These values are required, and it is recommended that the coordinates be captured as close as possible to the front door of the structure. If property records were imported, then many of the fields in the Structure Address column will be populated. If not, you should populate the column with whatever data can be collected in the field. Phone numbers are not needed unless the community requests this information be captured. If a homeowner provides a mailing address that differs from the building address, you can record this information in the Mailing Address column. If a separate mailing address is not provided, you should check the Check If Same as Building Address box. This will populate the mailing address column with the structure address information. Moving to the Structure Damage NFIP tab, this tab has many required fields that must be populated. Note that the Structure Type field offers you the option of switching the structure from residential to non residential. In this exercise, we are assessing a residential structure, so no changes should be made to this box. You should select the correct number of stories for the structure being assessed. You should then select the residence type. SDE offers three choices, with single-family residence being the most common residence type. The next data field requires you to select a foundation type. The illustration shown demonstrates the six most common foundations in residential construction. Foundation types vary geographically. For instance, slab-on-grade foundations are very common in the southern U.S., whereas basement foundations may be the most common in the northern U.S. The superstructure data field offers you four choices. Most homes in the U.S. are stud-framed, although you may occasionally encounter a common brick or masonry home. If superstructure type is unclear, 
you can record your observations in the Structure Information text field. You can choose from four roof covering types. If the structure has two different types of roof covering, select the type that covers the majority of the structure and make a note in the Structure Information box. The most common roofing type in the U.S. is asphalt shingles. Selecting an exterior finish is similar to selecting the roof covering. If the structure has two different types of exterior finish, select the type that covers the majority of the structure and make a note in the structure information box. In the U.S., siding or stucco and brick veneer are the most common exterior finish types. The final structure attribute you must select is whether the structure has an HVAC system. If no heating, cooling, or ventilation system is observed, then you should select none and note this in the structure information box. Year of construction may have been imported as part of the property record. If this field is not populated, you should estimate the decade in which the structure was constructed. The quality field refers to the structure's pre-disaster construction quality. This can be difficult to determine without conducting a more detailed inspection. It is recommended that average be selected since this field does not affect the final damage estimation. If the date damaged occurred was not pre-populated as a default value, then the correct date should be selected. A cause of damage must also be selected. SDE offers multiple damage types. Fire, flood, flood and wind, seismic, wind, and other. If other is selected, a text field will appear at the bottom of the column, prompting you to provide an explanation. You also have the option to click the Damage Undetermined box. You should select the applicable reason for not being able to determine the damage. If you select Flood or Flood and Wind as damage type, then the depth and duration of flood need to be recorded. Use visible high water marks to measure flooding depth. The depth of flood above the first floor should be less than or equal to the depth above ground. If a high water mark cannot be located on the structure, or any adjacent structures. Note this in the Structure Information text field. You should enter your name or team name and make sure the assessment date is the current date. It's recommended that these fields be populated as default values to ensure consistency. Data in the NFIP column is not typically recorded in the field. This data should be pre-populated via imported property records. If the information is not available, then placeholder or dummy values should be used. The Cost tab requires minimal data input. If the Damage Undetermined box was checked in the Structure tab, then all the data fields will be grayed out in the Cost tab and you can continue to the Output Summary tab or Photo tab if photos have not been taken. You must record a base cost and a geographic adjustment. The cost and additional adjustments do not require input, but can be used if desired by the community. If square footage was not imported with the property records, then you must record the estimated square footage of the structure. By clicking the calculator icon in the top left of the page, you can either use the built-in square footage calculator by entering structure dimensions, or manually enter square footage calculated outside of SDE. The last required data field in the cost tab is the depreciation rating. You have six preset depreciation percentages to choose from, or you can select other and provide a percentage along with an explanation. The element percentages tab is where you record the estimated percent damage for each structural element. If the Damage Undetermined box was checked in the Structure tab, then all the data fields will be grayed out in the Element Percentage tab. The Output Summary requires no data entry while in the field. 
This page displays the structure's percent damage based on data entered in the Structure, Cost, and Element Percentages tabs. This page offers you different methods for calculating the total damage percentage. The default method is computed using actual cash value. The other methods require additional data from other sources, such as a contractor's estimate or real estate appraisal. The last tab in the SDE software is the Photos tab. If you are running the SDE tool on a tablet with an integrated camera, then photos of the structure can be captured by clicking Use Integrated Camera. If the device does not have an integrated camera, then photos can be uploaded to SDE by clicking Select Photos to Upload, navigating to the location of the photos, and selecting the image captured of the structure. A minimum of two photos is required by SDE. Photos should be taken from the sidewalk or street to capture the front elevation and from the side to capture the remainder of the structure. Two additional photos may be used to capture any unique damages that may not be visible in the other photos. It is recommended not to exceed four photos. Now, we will walk through adding and creating a non-residential assessment. Non-residential assessments differ slightly from residential assessments. You can either click the Add Non-Residential Assessment icon on the home page or via the toolbar in the top left corner of the screen. The same screen with imported non-residential assessment properties will appear where you can choose an existing property record or add a new assessment using a new property record. The address tab for non-residential assessments is identical to the residential assessment address tab, so we will jump ahead to the structure tab. The structure attributes column differs from residential structure attributes in multiple ways. The number of stories selected will determine which structure uses you can select. The only other structure attributes that are recorded are whether the structure has a sprinkler system and if any conveyance, such as an elevator or escalator, is located within the structure. The structure information box should be used to record any discrepancies between the selected attributes and the actual structure. The damage information in NFIP columns require the same data as a residential assessment. The Element Percentages tab for non-residential assessments only contains seven structure elements. Just like in a residential assessment, if the Damage Undetermined box was checked in the Structure tab, then all the data fields will be grayed out in the Element Percentages tab. You should record estimated percent damages for each element based on what is observed in the field. We will now cover how to import SDE data into the SDE tool. This is for importing an existing SDE database that contains property records and assessments. If you have SDE data in the tool that should not be combined with the SDE data you wish to import, then you should clear this data from the database within the SDE tool. The bottom right-hand corner of the SDE homepage displays the number of property records and assessments currently in the SDE database. To clear the SDE database, you should navigate to the Database Functions feature on the toolbar and select Delete All SDE Data. A window will pop up with options for deleting different data. Check the box next to Delete All SDE Data and click Delete. The SDE tool will then prompt you to verify that the data should be deleted. Keep in mind, this action cannot be undone. The data should always be backed up before performing this operation. Once verified, the property and assessment count in the bottom right-hand corner should reset to zero. You now have a blank SDE database in the tool and can begin the import process. From the home page, you should click Import Export Functions 
and then select the Import SDE Data feature from the pop-up window. Once the Import SDE Data window is open, you should click Select Directory and navigate to the folder that contains the SDE data. This folder should contain a JSON file and a Photos folder. Click OK. A list of properties and assessments should appear on the screen. You can either check individual property records and assessments, or click Check All to check all records. Once the desired data has been selected, click Import. A pop-up window will appear stating that data has been successfully imported. Click OK. Once you return to the home page, the property and assessment count will appear in the bottom right-hand corner. If you want to transfer SDE data to another user or device, you can export the SDE data for re-importing into another copy of the SDE tool. Keep in mind that any errors or incomplete data that exist in the SDE tool will exist in the exported SDE data. It is recommended to address these errors and in incomplete assessments before exporting to prevent potential errors when re-importing the data. You have two format options for exporting SDE data. Exporting to Excel creates a spreadsheet that contains all the selected records and data associated with those records. This spreadsheet cannot be imported into SDE. Exporting the SDE data creates a folder that contains all SDE data and associated photos, which can be re-imported into the SDE tool. Exporting to Excel is commonly used to QAQC SDE data and also used as a quick reference source when working with SDE results. From the home page, you should click the Import Export Functions feature, then select Export Files to Excel. All SDE records in the database will populate the table shown. You should click Export in the top right corner, select the location for the Excel export, and click Save. An Excel file containing all SDE records should appear in the selected location. Exporting the SDE data will create a JSON file that contains all the property and assessment records in the SDE database. A Photos folder is also created, containing all the photos that have been attached to assessments. From the home page, you should click the Import Export Functions feature, then select Export SDE Data. At the top of the Export SDE Data page, you have the option to apply multiple filters to the data. If you only want to export a subset of the SDE data in the database, then these filters should be applied. The most common filter used is the Use Assessment Date feature to export assessments that were completed on selected dates. You can export all data in the database by clicking Export All Data. You will be prompted to select a location for the SDE data. The SDE tool will create a folder in that location that contains a JSON file and Photos folder. Another useful feature in the SDE tool is the ability to create reports. These reports can be useful for generating a quick, user-friendly report on a single property or for creating a summary of a community. From the home page, you should click the View Reports feature. You will be prompted to select one of three report types. All three report types allow you to filter data and can be exported as a PDF, Word document, or Excel document. A community report gives a snapshot of the structures assessed, focusing on the percent damage and associated dollar amounts. The report contains two assessments per page. Similar to the community report, the structure and percent damage report contains two assessments per page, but only displays the structure's location and percent damage. 
The summary report generates a one-page report for each record selected. This report is useful for discussing substantial damage results with a homeowner, or if a community official would prefer to work with printed records instead of navigating within the SDE tool. Thanks for watching. This training is one of a 10-part series. Please continue to Module 5.